And welcome back, and it is time for another episode of Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. I am your host, Doug Linkford, here with my co-host, Caleb Forbes, once again. Uh, we have a great episode on deck for you guys today, um, which might be beauty is in the, be on the eye of the beholder, <laughs> or depending on your definition of great, because we're yeah. going to have we're going to have some cheering hands on this episode. And we're probably gonna have we're probably gonna lose some subscribers, but <laughs> there's probably gonna be the comment section might be fire on this one, but it is one that I'm kind of looking forward to doing. And it's not full disclaimer. This is not an episode um, where we are gonna deliberately like trash on people and stuff or or right. things or things in the off road community or whatever. But it is something that um, it comes up all the time. Very very strong opinions on either side, um, and and it's basically. The premise of the episode is all of these kind of Jeep and off-road trends and things that have kind of happened in the off-road world that have kind of changed it in the last five to ten years. Some Absolutely. people say for the better. Some people say for worse. Um, it's not just unique to Jeeps. I will I will say that. But we're just going to kind of put everything we can think of together in one episode. And uh, we're going to talk about it. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to, to Dust. Us. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. And we are back. Uh, like Doug said, this is not going to be an episode where we uh, we slam everybody. Uh, this is simply more of like an observance of, you know, observation of the trends that have happened, uh, how they've kind of shaped our industry, what kind of products they've brought out since then, uh, or what kind of products the trends have caused to bring to market rather. Um, so if you're looking for a, uh, a clickbait slam piece and getting ready to type your Super angry comments. I mean, you found like, it. Comment like that's fine, but uh, <laughs> we're here. You're not going to get that from us. We're not. We're yes, you know are. we're just talking about like what's going on. And uh, I will go ahead and warn you. We are going to talk about the duck thing. Uh, we have to talk about the duck thing. Uh, Freaking ducks. I know. I know. That, that disclaimer dude, aside, <laughs> it is so polarizing, man. Let's put it ducks is. off. It Let's is. put ducks off for a little while because that is yeah. man. It's so we polarizing, need to work, we need to and I, and I get it. So but let's let's work up to it. Um, <laughs> we need to work up to the dust. Because man, this was not. Um, I just remember when I when I first started off roading, and I'm not going to date myself too bad. It, it we'll just say it was a long time ago. You know, it was just. It was more. I mean, rock crawling was kind of becoming a thing. It was a lot of mud, and I mean, it was down here in the south. Um, no, I'm not from the south, but I have been down here a very very long time. Um, and it was and it was kind of mudden mostly, and it was trails that weren't really established. There's not really a lot of off road parks. A lot of there's not a lot of land and openness like there is out west on the east coast to go do it. So, you know, we would go find power line trails, and we would just go find private land. And and some of that now when now what I know, some of it was unfortunately not tread lightly. I don't do that anymore, but I certainly did. This was this was north of twenty years ago. We didn't have any of these things. There was no. There was no Jeep shows. There was no, you know, Jeep invasion or or EJS was kind of a thing, but nobody I, nobody out here knew about it. It was just getting going. You know, racing wasn't a thing. I mean, none of this stuff was a thing. So this is, you know, I don't, I don't know if I don't want to blame COVID for it. I am going to blame COVID for the Ducks. Uh, but everything else, I guess it's just a natural progression of things and maybe mm -hmm. hobbies. I don't know. But um, I know you've got a list. I kind of got a glimpse at it. So, yeah, let, you know, I took what, what, a, do you, what do you got? I took what a preliminary it? list of just the things that I've noticed. I came into the industry right around 2000, the end of 2014, beginning of 2015. Um, so there was like a very distinct, distinct change around that time. I mean, I've been 
into Jeeps and I've owned a Jeep since 2010, 2011. 2011, uh, with my first YJ. And back then it was kind of exactly what you were talking about. Um, you find a little local mudding spot or you just find something somewhere to go off the trail and hope you don't get kicked off and called the, the cops called on you. Pretty much. Um, I went to URE one time. Um, it was way too far for my high school budget to just go and, <laughs> and drive to. Um, so it was just a lot of local undeveloped land. Um, but it was still very pure at that time. It was very much like go out, get dirty. Like it didn't matter what, like no one was putting goofy stuff on their vehicles. Like it was just like you had a cool Jeep or you didn't. And at the time, the cool thing was a 33 inch BFG all terrain. Um, So going from that and going into the industry around 2015, um, there was definitely that distinct change. Uh, I want to say the first one that I noticed was the angry grill. I think that was like the very first like kickoff to like, what is that? It was on a JK, wasn't it? It was on a JK. Absolutely. That's what did it. it. JK. That's what started this when four door JKs became used vehicles. Yeah. That's yeah. what I started agree it. With that. I'm when telling started you, man, in the market. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't, I, I got, I looked at your list a little bit, uh, right before we started recording and I didn't see all of it cause I kind of wanted to be kind of surprised on a few of them, but all of them to me, especially going on the Jeep side, they look like it was stuff that when, when JKs got less expensive, when JKs, you know, cause when JKs first came out, they were expensive for the time that they came out. They were four doors. It's the first time that ever happened. It opened up an entirely new market. Um, it definitely opened up some more different abilities off-road wise. It, it decreased some abilities, with wheelbase and whatnot, um, some ways. Um, but it definitely changed the market. And when those got less expensive, especially when that 07 to 11 got, got kind of left behind by the three, six and kind of the newer iteration in 2012, that's, I think when things started to change because people were buying them and we started having the internet and Amazon became a big thing. And eBay was, eBay was in its heyday back then. And Amazon was getting going and, you know, you could find all this stuff and, you know, capitalism being what capitalism is, say what you want. If somebody sees a need, somebody sees a need that they can fill or a, a market segment or a niche that they can fill, um, leave it to Amazon or eBay. <laughs> Some company's <laughs> going to get on there yeah. and start selling everything from from right. plastic interior trim pieces to angry grills to whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, entire companies have been built uh, started, built, and and sustained by this kind of thing that that we're starting to talk about here. So, yeah, I mean, and I, like, I'm not going to so, do it, but I think that's what no, started it. But and I'm I'm going to go out on a limb here and say something even a little more controversial. But so I I remember being infatuated with the automotive scene. Uh, this and you're going to laugh at this, everyone will, but I think a lot of people can relate to this in the Fast and Furious era. I grew up watching the the very, very first and second Fast and Furious movies and seeing cars decked out, lit up. I mean, it was cool. It was freaking cool. And I, I, I'm i going to say that a lot of people went from the JDM import scene and saw how versatile a Jeep was. And then they actually had a family that they wanted to go do more fun stuff with. And that need to personalize and customize and, you know, accessorize we'll, we'll call all the eyes here um bled into the jeep scene with the resurgence of ebay and amazon and cheap widely available parts so and i really think that's all of those things the culmination of all the, those things together made that happen and started all of this um i don't think just one of those things by themselves could have caused what we're seeing today dude you just hit me like right in the soul <laughs> I mean, man. So I was. This podcast can make me old, or make me make everybody know how old I am. I was already an adult when Fast and Furious came out. When Fast and Furious mm-hmm. One came out, and when when Paul Walker became who Paul, you know, rest in peace and God bless him. You know, he was my hero back then. So I was, but I was already a, a full grown adult, and I was big into, um, I was big into uh, Mustangs back then. And there was a scene in, in, in that movie where they race the American muscle and it, you know, the, the Yurko and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, year one, nobody knew what year one was until fast and furious outside of the people who were buying 
the legit. It went from being like 50, 60, 80, you know, 70 year old white dudes, you know, Q-tips, you know, that were half retired or retired buying year one for their vintage cars to now year one was like a thing, you know, because you had Harry's and, you know, it was, you know, and that F-150 Lightning that, you know, his character drove around. And, you know, it was a lot of JDM import tuner stuff, but they also worked in the American muscle. And I definitely had a bunch of people that I hung out with that were, I'm, yeah, we were, we were absolutely affected by that because it was cool. And was so cool. it brought mainstream kind of some of the things you could do to a vehicle that before, you know, now just pull up Amazon, type in your vehicle and, and the word accessories, and you've got 50 pages of crap you can do to your vehicle. But back then it was really, you had to use your imagination and you didn't really know and there wasn't parts as widely available. So performance was kind of the one thing we looked at. And then, you know, vinyl graphics obviously became a thing. And then, you know, obviously the movies kept coming. The changes kept coming. You know, Dom, you know, Dominic Toretto's character has always been an American muscle guy. So there's always kind of been that mix in that in that series of, you know, import. It was always import versus kind of American muscle. Now it's gotten absolutely stupid. We're putting jet cars in space. But I think. I think you're probably right. I think as far as the automotive, that that franchise has probably had uh it not probably, it has had an effect for sure. And you're absolutely right that I kind of grew out of that and got into four by four and truck and all that as I grew out of my twenties and into my thirties and now out of my thirties and well into my forties. That yeah, it absolutely did that. I can I can see that. That's a very good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I just I just feel like that just all like of that emerged out. with the the need and want to personalize and 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 your your own ride basically, and just with it becoming widely available, um, just made it way too easy for everyone to do that. And so why not? Um, and then we start seeing the multiple stacked light bars, and then everything kind of went to like a super blingy. This is also the the beginning of the bro truck era too, like trucks started getting squatted and like everyone was just putting lights on everything. And I think all of that just kind of came around very quickly. And then I don't know. I just, I think people just took it to 15 different levels. <laughs> um, and I remember when like the three, six a tur- turboing a three, six was like from prodigy. It was like the coolest thing you could possibly do until people realized how, versatile and available a hemi swap was you didn't need a uh, a specialized motor shop to do a hemi swap in a jk um definitely helps but you didn't need it um so 2015 16 early 17 that's when all this is going on and a lot of people made fun of it um then we see the surgence of Jeep shows. Uh, we see Jeep Beach start, and I want to say that started in 2014. Um, that was, yeah, a lot of the a lot of the big ones that are big now started in the mid teens, yeah. mid teens, mid to early teens. Um, yeah. And I think that in combination with, I mean that that lit a fire under the accessorization part, because then now you've got a specific show like it's not just a general car show where you're put up against a Charger yeah. or you know, a, a freaking awesome, you know, 78 Cuda or something like now you've got your own Jeep show. So how do you stand out from everyone else in, in, in the sea of four door JKs? Well, you put your stuff on it, you put your lights on it, you put big shiny wheels on it, you see how high you can lift it, see what the absolute biggest freaking tire you can put on the thing. And now <laughs> the stock the 50, one stands out. Now everybody 54 does inch Baja claws, I think were, were on some of the first the big vehicles in uh, the first Jeep beach. So I think all of those things in culmination together just provided a big melting pot um, to where we are today. Um, <sighs> for the good or better, like you said before, entire companies have been built off of this. Um, yeah. There are Absolutely so many light companies. There are so many accessory companies or everything. So what I kind of want to go over today, uh, now that we've kind of gone over the history of <laughs> why we are seeing what we're seeing now, um, I kind of want to just talk about a couple of the big trends today. Get your, get your hot take on them. Um, and oh, I got the takes, baby. Get the takes on them. I got the uh, takes. And then just see if we can offer any advice to not necessarily change people's minds. Cause I don't think we're ever going to change people's minds. Those who want to buy the stuff are always going to buy the stuff. I can sure maybe how to try. do it. Maybe how to do it in a, in a better way. If that's possible. 
I don't know, man. I think some of the stuff that I've seen, and I'm probably getting into one of your topics, when these people do stuff, especially like these colored covers of stuff, right? Like, we're going to buy a colored door hinge cover. Yeah. We're going to buy. And I'm like, okay, all right. So I get in your head that and I think this is a lot of it. Like, I've I've almost made a career out of being able to, especially at the beginning of Outlaw Off-Road, of really being able, it's like the one little talent that I have. I can kind of visualize something and and I've been fortunate enough to be able to do that. They go, yeah, this is going to look good or no, this is going to look like crap. <laughs> and and I've been very fortunate that that, that look has materialized and is, and is right and is usually correct based off what a customer tells me that they want, not necessarily off kind of my style, even though my style is very uniquely, you know, stock plus. I, I like things that look like they could have been a package from the factory, very clean stuff. But I've kind of been able to change a little bit based on what customer tells me. I've never gone all overboard. Like, you just don't – I see all of these Jeeps at all these Jeep shows, but I never see those – I don't see those kind of vehicles in outlaw shops very often. I think that's just because we're not known for that, so those people don't come to us, which, you know, whatever. Um, but I, at the, I just think that some people, no matter what, like something's wrong in their brain. and <laughs> The things they think are going to look good just don't. Like they, I've seen some color combinations, and I'm going, "What made you think that? Like, like, like what? Like, I really want to know." So I think some people are just lost. I think some people are just beyond help. Yeah. But you know, we can try yeah. here. But they're they're not going to so, like my hot takes anyway. Yeah. So let's dive into that. You you mentioned that first one, the stick on colored accessories. I actually do have that on my list. <clears throat> I think it's gone a little overboard. I do think there's a way to do it so that it's not so loud i'm trying to i'm trying to really watch my wording here to be honest with you um because i really don't want this to turn into like a hate piece um <clears throat> me being me uh i'm a designer at heart i'm man i've i've taken the art courses i've I, color theory is my best friend I, I have a very set design style that we can see throughout the outlaw branding um so for me color plays a huge part on how i, I view things um, and I'm, I'm all for the accent colors. I really am. Um, I, I love when people love lean into the uh, four by E blue. I love when people lean into the Rubicon red um, or they take select colors of their vehicle and, and kind of just dial into that. Um, there are really great ways to do bright colors. Um, we'll look at Candace's Jeep from uh, Outlaw for Nashville, for example. It's bikini. And she's got chartreuse um, accents on it. But there it's not Is that what that overwhelming. color it's it's a well i want to say the powder coat color is illusion shark chartreuse cosmic chartreuse um so it's got a little little shine to it little flake to it it's loud it looked like there's, hazard there's no, yellow in the pictures like <laughs> right like lime it, and hazard loud. yellow there's, had a baby yeah there's there's no question about it but to do it right you don't flood every single piece of the vehicle yeah, on there. That's the i think having one piece of that color on each corner or each side of the vehicle is plenty um, I think so being able to tie right. that together human nature. I think that's mm -hmm. where the problem is, because I think when people say, OK, my color is going to be chartreuse or my color is going to be four by blue or my color is going to be red or whatever. They they think in their mind, well, the whole vehicle is black or the whole vehicle is gray or the whole vehicle is red. So I can't possibly overpower that. Right. So they see all these cool things. and They just order it. And I used to do that a long time ago when looking at. And it works with anything like, OK, well, I don't like the valving on this shock. I need to add more compression and rebound. Well, I, I'm going to take a big swing out and go 30 percent. Generally, that's too much like to, you know, the human brain just thinks, oh, I just need to throw everything at it. And I think they order all this stuff because, you know, you just have this shopping thing, right? Like, oh, I'm going to add that to the cart. I'm going to add that to the cart. I'm going to add that to the cart. And then you get it all in and you put it on. And either a you've you know, you've gone too far and you're like, eh whatever or you definitely want the non-stop there's a couple of different reasons you keep that stuff on there i do think some people see it, it it's kind of like that self-justification when they buy a low end rent a low rent lift kit and then they go on facebook to try to get people to kind of back them up and you know you want to buy a cheap lift kit that's on you that's a whole different episode whatever and they're certainly there for that we've had that discussion many times but then they're trying to go and get people to kind of validate their decision to make them feel better obvious you got to know that some of that's happening with this like they know they went overboard um they just do but i think some people 
don't then see it as overboard. They just, they absolutely love it. And I think that's the people with like, I don't know, man. I just think something's, we all have talents. We all have strengths and weaknesses. Color coordination mm-hmm. is definitely not something for everybody. Just like, you right. know, and it, it's driving. And like, I don't expect every single person to be, you know, have designer color theory memorized in their brain. Oh, it's less than uh, half that are going to, that are going to do something and do it right. Way less than half. Way less. Um, but what I will say is let's try to leave the stick on stuff at, you know, in, in the Amazon cart. Um, for one, the three M tape doesn't hold together. the The material and the color dye itself is very cheap. So over within a year, that stuff is faded and it doesn't look like the same color that you put it on. And it might look good when you put it on; it might match perfectly, but over time, it's not going to. Um, Powder coated things definitely hold up a lot longer and better. And painted with a clear coat, obviously, but it's more expensive. Can't it is more expensive. Money. It, it is, but your vehicle's an investment. Like, doesn't, no, it's not an investment. It's just my car, man. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of it. But that's the, that's the logic that people you know, use. Like, it is. It's my it car. Is. It's, you know, we get into this whole thing of everything is good. Everything is okay. And as long as you feel good about it, right? Like, mm-hmm. then that's just not true. Like, it's just it's not, not. It's just not there, true. There is a such thing as too much. And I get but that I, people will say, well, <clears> it's your Jeep. Who makes the payments? Okay, that's fine. The yeah. second you post it on social media. The second you make it public, the second you take it to a Jeep show, the second you mm-hmm. do these things where it goes beyond the realm of I did this for me and my vehicle, mm-hmm. then you open yourself up and don't get mad when somebody oh, yeah. like you or somebody like me or somebody like anybody mm-hmm. goes, yeah, I don't like that. I, I think that's yeah. ugly. Like, that's my opinion. Yeah. You're allowed to think it's nice. But the second you the second you make that bad boy public, I now have the right to say something about it. And. Mm-hmm. I don't have to just scroll on by because welcome to the internet. If I want to, yeah. if I want to hate on your publicly posted picture, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to hate on your publicly right. posted picture. Yeah. And that's, that's something that can be said for every one of the topics we're going to discuss today. If you post it on social media or on the internet, anywhere you're yeah, posting bitch. to an open air or open format, like it's open season. And that's, TikTok, it, I'm not, Instagram, I'm not coming to your house and looking at your personal photo album and, and saying, you suck. Uh, you posted it on a very. I mean, I will if you let me, let me come by. You know, look at, I'll, I'll uh, do it. You know, <laughs> but yeah. So the last part I want to talk about this is um, colors can be cool. Colors are very cool. Um, some in colors mod- all work things really in well moderation. than others. All things in moderation. Things in moderation. Um, <laughs> but look up a um, a complimentary color wheel. Um, this is something that I use all the time to balance out to say, okay, how much of this color versus this color is going to look good. And it's, it's going to actually tell you if you've got a red, what color is complementary, what color is parallel, what color is a tertiary. So a third color that looks good. Um, hey, it'll man, tell you all these things. Words. Stop using I know, words. I'm sorry. Um, but it'll tell you all these things. And so maybe that red and bright purple doesn't work. But maybe red and subdued blue does. So Bro, it's you still know they're on not going to do that. That blue purple scale. I you know, know they're I'm not just trying to be it. helpful. Like it's great I'm advice. It's awesome advice. But I'm telling, like people just get this thing in their head. It's that's the problem. They get it in their head and they get this picture in their head and it's awesome in their head. But now they've spent the money, the fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, the two hundred dollars, and it's on there. And they're just like, like being pot committed to something is a real thing. And it's just where they're at. It's just, I mean, it is what it is. So we can, we can talk crap about it. And I will continue to do that. If you if your stuff looks ugly, I'm going to tell you your stuff looks ugly. Like, don't get mad at me. Um, but you're right. Like the color wheel is a real thing. Like at, that can be right. But then people go like, well, this green is a complimentary color of that. And then they go off on some wildly tangent green color. And they're like, I saw this. I saw somebody try to use the color wheel as justification to do this completely stupid color combination. I'm like, I, I don't think that red is what that meant that's not right i mean it's great advice i just wish people would do it i mean there's so many hundreds of thousands of jeeps out there now and i think some of it a lot of it comes from and i don't remember if this is on your list or not these these jeep shows and these show and shines and you know these meetups where people are like judging other people's vehicles and it's gotten to the point where like the loudest jeep wins like or, or, and it's just gotten weird because I mean, I heard I didn't go to this show. I was out of town. I, don't, I think I was 
this was either when I was at a race or maybe when I was was in one uh, in Mexico. There was a Jeep show here local to me where it was like there was like a thing like drama came up because a judge who was not part of the event. It was somebody who was selected by somebody at the event dinged somebody on the show and shine for best of show because their inner fender liners weren't clean enough. Now, this is a Jeep show. This was a Jeep show. It was only Jeeps. And that best in show, it, the guy lost. And this, now these people were upset because their fender wells weren't clean. Now, do I give a crap about fender wells? No. But these people collect. These people are out there for hardware. These people want these, these plastic little uh, whatever trophies, you know, um, and trophies can be good. I've got one hanging somewhere in my office, somewhere in here, that was like some flex competition that I won, like, I don't know, years ago. I haven't even entered one since. Um, it was back when I had Reaper, and it was years ago. Um, I have that one, and I have, you know, all the podium trophies that I get from Ultra 4. Um, but people will treat their best light, best lighting setup award like it's a first place at KOH. Right? Like, and I think that's some of it. Like, you know, it's it's gotten to be this whole subculture of Jeep shows and all that where they're just trying to one up each other with more stick on stuff and more color. And what now can I think about what what can I powder coat that somebody else hasn't thought to powder coat or what can I what can I pull off? It's usually not powder coat, it's like spray paint. What can I go and get some custom color O'Reilly's and rattle can this the right way? And and I get wanting to customize the vehicle. Not three hundred yards from me right now is the four by you being built this week. Uh, because we got two weeks um, till it goes on um, the trailer from Moab, and it is a four by e. Everybody knows this now, and I and I'm obviously the accent. It's a sting gray four by e, and the accent color is four by e blue, and that's it. It's four by e blue on a gray Jeep with black things. It's black and four by e blue. That's it. Um, and I actually I bought some things thinking it might look good, um, and when I got them in and I started putting them on the Jeep, I was like, mm, that's too much. I don't want it to look like one of those. So I actually pulled back and it was tough because like, man, I was like, man, I bought this stuff already. I already took it out of the package. So I get where people, I get the mentality. Like you bought all this stuff thinking it was going to look good. The color was good. You got this great idea in your head. You get it in. Reality kind of starts to set in. And it's a hard thing to make yourself pull back and either, you know, sometimes you, sometimes it's non-returnable. You just got to throw it away. Like people don't want to think that they wasted money. You maybe you got to send it back. Maybe you got to change it up. Maybe you don't, you know, you get it on there. Maybe you get something on there and you throw away the stock piece that you removed and now you've gotten rid of it. Now you're kind of pot again, you're kind of screwed. So I get, I get the mentality. Um, I don't, we just, you know, we have different outcomes. My outcome was, I mean, maybe I sent some stuff back. Maybe I'm just going to chunk it, but I'm not going to put it on the vehicle. If it doesn't serve the overall aesthetic, I'm just not going to do it. Whether that mean, now if that means I threw away some money, it means I threw away some money and I don't like to do that. But I'm not going to I'm not just going to throw crap on there just to say, oh, I got more. Have you ever thought about putting four by blue on this? Oh, no. Well, I did. And there it is. I'm just not going to do it. So but I do think Jeep shows and some of these show and shines have, are to blame for some of that. I think for I, sure. I do. I agree with that. Um, but also and this could be an entirely other topic of. Like what are the like? Why are you building your, your vehicle? Are you building it to winch own shines? Are you building it to show off on social media? Or are you building it to, to be functional and do cheap things? Like that's a whole other that's episode. Fair. I don't want to get into right this second. But like, if that's the purpose of the build, then I mean, I get it. I get it. Um, Brittany and I did completely opposite on her four by e. I know you like the four by e blue. She hated it. First thing she asked me to do, she's like, "Is there any way to make all the four by e blue black?" Go away. And I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, absolutely there is. <laughs> well, not everybody likes so, blue. I get it. Like, I totally understand yeah, that. It, she thought it was a little loud, so she asked me to make all the things black. But so, she didn't change it all to, like, half sparkly purple. I put no. some pink mm -hmm. over here. I put some green. Didn't do that. I used a little plasti dip for where I needed to to make it work. Um, but made it all matching matte black. Um, and then... She didn't like the uh, the Chrome Sahara badging. She's like, "That's flashy. I don't love it." And um, so, <laughs> so I ended up using the um, the old school Sahara palm tree off the TJs. Oh, that's right. I you found did. like looking at yeah. your. I wouldn't. You would. Had I not known 
if you don't know that one's a four by you, you wouldn't. I mean, it's white and black. Like, it's super simple, super clean. Like, mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't even know. You really would not know it's a no, four by you. Um, you've got she's obviously got the four by you charger things. on the side, but yeah. She she wanted it subdued. Um, now there's a really cool. I found an awesome like retro decal uh, for the back, uh, and it's a, like the old school like four wheel drive. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Decals. Yep, yep. Uh, and it says electric four wheel drive. <laughs> nice. And uh, <laughs> so little things like that. It's touches like that here and there that she loves. Um, but you know she didn't want to lean into the big color thing. She wanted less color. And I'm she's gone the opposite. Totally fine with that. Like instead yeah, of all the colors, wanted, I want none of the black colors. Yeah, she but wanted black wheels and here's and my guess though. Badges. She's not the kind of person you know her personality better than I do. Obviously, she's not the kind of she's not a look at me person, right? Correct. And these people, Correct. I think, are for whatever reason. We can go into therapy talks later. For whatever reason, <laughs> they want people to look at them. They want that they, they want to be attention, seen, sure. right? Maybe in I don't know. That's a psychological thing. I won't get into that. But for some reason, something's going on there where they want that attention. They want to be looked at. And they look at the the Jeep as the the way to do that because I've seen plenty of Jeeps that have like, you know, the driver has, you know, fifteen different colors in their hair and all the colors in the hair are on the Jeep, or their hair is you know green this side but there's green on the Jeep and it's like the Jeep has become them and I'm like, I mean I'm I'm about that I'm part of the out off road almost, industry but I don't know that I would too ever much make, of a reflection of personality right I don't know that I would ever go so far as to make a machine, an extension mm. of myself. I don't, mm -hmm. I just don't know that I would do that. I, I don't, I know that is a thing. It's just not something I understand. So I won't comment too much on it. It's just, I think that is some of it. And it's just not something, it's not something I would do. Um, probably not going to dye my, what little hair I do have. Um, four by E blue. It's probably yeah, not going to Probably happen. not. It's probably not. Probably not. Happen. And I said, I wasn't going to get into this too much, but I do feel like part of this is is because of social media. Um, I do feel like oh, 100%, a hundred percent more than some, a dude. And this is this is kind of on my list, but it, we're going to circle into this actually. I get um, into it. Right. Social it. media is, is is really pushed a lot of this, and For we sure. pushed a lot of this. Look at me, because the people that are being seen on social media that have a ton of followers, they're getting brand offers, they're getting uh, sponsorship offers, they're getting influencer deals. They're getting not you're, you're, you're taking cheap parts and making them even cheaper by getting them for free. Um, and then now this has turned into something. I'm going to jump on my soapbox here. Now this has turned into something that everyone in the Jeep community is just chasing sponsorships and influencer status. And that is not that's not the history of this. That's not that's not how this started. That's not the, the love. That's not the spirit of the sport, so to speak. It, and it grinds my gears uh, every time I open Instagram and I'm scrolling and I see, you know, some new girl with her ass out and it's like, look at these great wheels. And it's like thong bikini. And you're like, Do you, is it why? 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 Well, two totally things to that. Stop. Number one, <laughs> number one, it's not going to stop. It's just not. Like, I know. Yay, those days are gone. The days of that if you try to do traditionally like what a brand was marketed you know for wheels back in the 80s you're just not going to sell any wheels it just is what it is right i know but i will say this and and i've had this come to me directly from multiple very big very well known named companies ceos founders of these companies these people are not getting free stuff like we think they are like they're just not right so I will tell you, it is very easy, and I've done this. Like I've had, I've had influencers approach me. I've, it happens all the time. I get messages on Facebook all the time through the Outlaw Off Road account. You've seen some of them. I get personal messages. I get them all the time about sponsorships for this and companies trying to do this, and you know, some of them are legit companies just trying to use us as an off road shop to kind of push their brand. That that's fine. I understand that, but there are a lot of influencer driven, and I get a lot of these on on my personal page or my, I guess my business personal Facebook, whatever my my blue check Facebook um, of and, and what I'm seeing is I could very easily get these bikini clad influencers and you don't have to give anything for free. They, they like to make you think they're getting stuff for free because they're in competition with each other too, right? Like this girl in a bikini is in competition with this girl in a bikini is in competition with this girl in a bikini. They're all in competition with each other. So they want you to think that they're getting stuff for free and the company has no reason to say otherwise. So if you're going to work, work with, I use air quotations, an armor company and you're going to push their bumpers. So you're get the, you're this girl in an influence. You got your bikini and you're going to lean over and show your rear end 
on some bumper. Um, more than likely, the, the, the overwhelming possibility of over 80%, you didn't get that bumper for free. You got between 10 and 20% off. Um, that's yeah, it. And, and a code and I agree with that, to but, give other people 5 when, to 10% off. Right. But when did it become a thing for influencers to be in comp- when did when did the cheap cheaper part cost to you equate to influential status that's that's really what i want to figure out like cuz there was a turning point at some point where yeah just but there's a turning point where like everyone's in competition to see oh well i did get this for free so i'm more valuable and i'm like oh, well man, but have you noticed have you noticed that none of them will say they got it for free They'll thank a company. Yeah. Have you seen? Did yeah, you notice this that? Is true. They're like, yeah. oh, thanks mm-hmm. somebody. And the assumption is that they got it for free. So mm-hmm. I, I get parts for. I get a lot of parts for free. I get a lot of parts that I pay for. But when it comes to like um, the race car, you know, I have written contracts for that. That's, that's a totally different deal. But let's it's let's take the four by for it. Let's take the four by. I think we all know I'm not getting on Instagram and showing my backside to anybody. <laughs> People would probably don't. give me parts <laughs> not to do that with my white my neon white self. But yeah. There are a lot of companies out there that don't do that kind of marketing. There's companies out there that do both. They, I will work out deals with companies. And it's not like I'm calling, asking. Let me be clear on that. I don't call companies and be like, yo, can you give me something for free? I don't do that. Um, there are companies that I call and go, hey, man, I just got this. This is what we're going to do with it. And this is what I need. What they charge me is up to them. I don't, I don't ask for it either way. I don't bitch about it either way. You know, If they're going to give me a, uh, a something, a light kit, or a lift kit, or a set of shocks, or a set of tires, whatever. It's not because I ask for them for free. I don't do that. Um, I am appreciative of anything they give me off. The reason that they, why would they give it to me for free? Because they know that, A, that vehicle is going to be owned by me for X amount of time, whatever I've committed to. In this case, it's two years. Um, You know, I said, okay, two show season, that's what I'm committing to. They know that their product is going to be on a vehicle that's seen by X amount of people in the public. It's going to go to X amount of events. That's that's more traditional marketing. Oh, this this Jeep's going to be at these blank 15 shows over the next two years, and it's going to be an outlaw off-roads booth, and it's going to be driven by this guy, and you know he's gonna he's gonna post positive things about my brand. That is enough for them to either you know give me 25 percent off, give me half off, give me free parts, whatever. And while on the race car, everything is a contract. There is a, you are a level X, you are paying this much, we are giving you this, we are going to post this, we are going to do this. It is all written out, and there are contracts in my desk right now for every sponsor that we have on 4699 that goes into, you know, if I have 15 sponsors, which I think is about the number we have, I'll guarantee you 12 of them are on con- are contracted sponsors. There's one or two in there that are, you know, homeboy handshake and it's old school, Um but the by and large, most of them, it's in writing exactly what's expected of both sides. Where with the shop build, there's literally zero contracts. There's zero. It was phone calls saying, "Hey, man, I'm building this Jeep. I just bought it, but I'm not going on. I'm not not going on Instagram and doing that." I think some of it is some of it is the company. There are companies who straight up would rather work with somebody in the industry like myself. I'm not an influencer, man. Maybe I can influence some sales. Maybe I can, maybe there's ways I could do that, but it's certainly not by taking pictures of myself and putting it on Instagram. Thousand percent never going to do that. Um, But there are other, there's other ways I can influence. And then I think, like you said, kind of the social media battle for sure. But I blame a lot of it. I put blame on the companies that do this type of marketing because they seek out these type of marketing outlets and if you put it out there as a company that this is how you're going to market your products, guarantee you if you've decided that, well, my way I'm going to market my products is to find the flashiest chick in a bikini that I can, and I'm going to sexualize her and I'm going to objectify her because she doesn't mind being objectified. All the girls like that. I mean, you know, there's we all know there's ways that, that you can do that, that are out there where women can make money that way. Um, mm-hmm. and, and men too, but it's, it's the vast majority of it is females. Um, let's yeah, you see just a, a is lot what it more is. On, on female and Jeep. hundred percent. And again, no, no hate Exponentially on, on women, but you know, there are right and wrong ways to do that. Like let's, let's just be completely transparent here and talk about the outlaw ambassador program. Um, the way you and I have written the outlaw ambassador program out is you've got to provide some value. 
You've got to attend shows. You've got to be part of the community in a positive light. Like, and obviously the more you do with us as a company, the more you build with us, we're going to help you out more. Um, but I'm more, I'm more responsive to people that want to start a relationship with us, a long-term build goal and a customer that becomes a friend or family versus a quick influencer deal here and there. Well, how many, um, how many brand ambassadors have I ever given free parts to? None. <laughs> In fact, zero and I can, like you I said, in full transparency, that. you can't even get to the top level of being a brand ambassador without law off-road unless you've actually been a customer of a certain level. Like you had to have been a customer. You had to have had that experience as a customer X amount of times or X amount of dollars to know what it is to be a customer. So you can therefore then represent the brand. Now, could I start going out tomorrow and give out a couple of free cheap parts? It doesn't cost me a lot. Partner with some girls on Instagram and, and probably get some likes. And I, I could do that. I could absolutely do that. And, and there's companies that do that. Now, I'm not going to say their business model is bad. They might actually end up making more money than me in the long run. It's just something I've chosen not to do. So, but I think the companies that do it differently, I think I don't blame the influencers as much as I blame, you know, if that, if that job opportunity, quote unquote, wasn't there, we wouldn't have influencers. Correct. Absolutely. But because everybody from off-road companies to freaking hotel chains do it, um, yeah, again, we go back. Capitalism is alive and well. Yep. If there is a yep. way that I can monetize it, I'm, you know, it's up to the individual whether or not they're if, willing if the to do the things to that it requires to monetize. Get monetized. Correct. Yeah. 100%. Um, so, and that's kind of how I want to wrap the, that section of this up is I don't, I don't want to blame the individuals. I don't want to, I don't want to put hate on them. I, I, I do the want to place, I want to place responsibility on social media as a whole has changed the perception of how we do things and how we want to be seen and how we want to be viewed. And I feel like that has contributed to the, uh, to this. Um, the next thing I have on my list, um, and we're going to, I promise you everybody, we're going to get to the ducks and <laughs> we're saving this for last. No, nope, um, we're going to go so long on this episode. We're just gonna be like, you know what? No ducks, <laughs> no ducks and no ducks um, on the show. So actually, I want to hear, do you have anything on, before we dive into ducks, uh, do you have anything on, on your list that you just kind of want to call out and uh, that you've seen as a trend as well? Uh, <laughs> the Jeep wave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. so the Jeep wave has been around for a while. I know. I, I think the new thing is getting upset when people don't. Yes. Back. That's what I mean. Yeah. That, okay. It's, it's when okay. people... <laughs> When people get mad because you don't Jeep wave and, and the social media mm -hmm. thing, when people go, and again, we wouldn't know if people were mad about this if we didn't have social media, right? So people right. make these posts about, um, well, if you don't Jeep wave, trade in your Jeep. This is a family-friendly show, so I'm going to abbreviate this. F you. Right? Okay. I, look, I... I drive more things than just my Jeep. I drive my truck. I have... Uh, a motorcycle. I actually have a Harley that has a different wave. Um, I also don't Harley wave. Um, I have a Jeep. I have the race car. Like I, I, I find myself, I have my wife's car. I, I, you know, I find myself in driving situations all the time. You know, I drive cross country multiple times a year. It's just not on my mind people to look in the oncoming lane of traffic. Is there a Jeep coming? And then and then people are like, well, do we wave at Gladiator? Like, I'm not, I'm not going to take the time to look in, first of all, look in oncoming traffic, to look for a grill, and then determine what model that is. Is it a Gladiator? Is it a JL? Do, is it because it's not a Wrangler? Do I wave at it? What if it's a Renegade? What if it's a Commander? What if it, I'm not going to do that. First of all, first of all, I think it's unsafe. I just think it's unsafe. We live in a time where people already can't drive. <laughs> like, we all see it every day of people in our own lanes, on our own side of the road, that can't freaking drive. Um, that's just the world we live in too, where everybody nowadays is so in it, in it and out for themselves that people are inconsiderate on the roadways. People are merging. They're getting in. They don't know how to drive. Um, we're not placing an emphasis on driving education anymore, clearly, um, or, or just common decency and human courtesy. So we're not doing those things. Right. And so that makes it all, that makes driving all that much more dangerous. Um, why am I going to add to that? by looking in the opposite lane 
to look at something and then wave. I'm just not going to do it. Okay. And that doesn't mean that I should sell my Jeep. It means that I'm a safer yeah. driver than you is what it means. <laughs> and, and yeah, and like I, you said, I'm just not, not going to do it. To it. And most of the time, especially around the area that I'm at, like people really don't drive well. Um, and I've, Dude, I've that's all over the country several times that the, the best part about owning a Grand Cherokee as a daily is not having to wave to anybody. <laughs> you don't have to wave. Any, I don't wave. I don't. I'm no. not going to do it. Like when I had the Gladiator and but I then, drive around, I didn't wave at people. I just didn't do it. Now, no. But also, like, where do you draw the line? Like, you go to Pigeon Forge for Jeep Invasion. Are you just going to keep your hand up the entire time? And I get this is why people buy the stupid decals. Bingo. I'm just going to call them what it is. You put it on your mirror. Oh, it's yeah, stupid. The- it's it's the Jeep thing. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Am I going to drive down the strip and just hang my hand out the window the entire time and wave That's frantically what have to, to do. every <laughs> single person? No, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, around where I'm at in Lake Norman, there are so many Jeeps around here. All of us are just doing the same thing. We're all out enjoying the weather, enjoying being near a lake. Am I going to sit there and wave to every single one? No. Am I going to sit here and worry about who's got a compass, who's got a renegade, who's got a gladiator, who's got a... No, I'm absolutely not going to do that. I'm sorry. Now, if you want to, I grew up in Western Kentucky. To, oh, by all means, yeah. Where the home of the wave at everybody you see. Right. Um. You know, and, and I just saw this. It was so funny. Like around North Carolina, I don't see this very much, but I was driving around Kentucky when I went to uh, Bowling Green when I was when I was racing and I drove around Bowling Green. And it was funny, like as soon as I crossed into Kentucky, like you're just it's total strangers. Everybody just kind of throws up. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Mm-hmm. It's just that kind of it's just that part of the country. Um, You know, it's those flyover states. And, and I was like, man, I, I kind of miss that. Like I, that's how I grew up. So if you want to wave, wave. I, I don't care. But don't get mad at me when I don't wave back. Maybe I didn't yeah, see absolutely. you. Like, right. It's it's not a rude gesture. I'm not intentionally going out of my way to to not wave. And and unless I give you the middle finger, like I don't mean anything rude by it. Now, if you see the middle finger flying, then like you probably did something to deserve it, but let's be honest. But <laughs> or you're just being a jerk that day. Um Yeah, but I mean like I'm not intentionally like no, I, I don't have a problem with people wave. waving at me. Yeah. I, if you want to wave no. at me, wave at me. I don't. I don't care. Like I'm not going to get mad at you because you wave at me. Where I draw the line is you get media. mad at me because I didn't wave back. Yeah. Well, and then the worst part, and, and what I think sums this up is like the thought process to go on social media and then post. Take the time to write a post about someone not waving at you and being <laughs> upset about that. Like, what kind Sell of grown ass adult Urgh. are you? Sell it. Like. Like that is the epitome of a look at me. I want attention. I need validation. Post is the they didn't wave at me, and this is what their Jeep looks like. You should shun them. What? Yeah, but then what about the hundred people on the post are like, yeah, right on, right on. Sell your Jeep, man. Hell yeah, brother. I don't know, idiots. Let's. That's part of that. That is one trend. That's I, where I draw I, the line. Like I don't. Can, again, I'm not against that. the Jeep wave. I'm not against the Harley wave. <laughs> no. I'm not against. I don't know if the Bronco. I'm not against community whatsoever. I, maybe no. there's a Subaru it, it, wave. I don't know. Whatever you do in sure. your community is up to you. Um, but yeah, that the, the drawing the line is the Facebook calling people out and telling them they shouldn't be an owner of a certain vehicle because they don't do whatever your community right. does. I don't know what I mean. What if Bronco people came out and said the Bronco wave was like, do your white, do you flash your wiper blades three times i whatever <laughs> i don't know and then you get mad at me right. because you see my bronco and i don't hit my wiper blades like come on people like so i yeah. just want to i just i just want to find out whoever came we're up gonna draw the line and stop them up at some point and, and put it back yeah. in the grave I, you're right it has been around a long time yeah. and it's not going anywhere and it shouldn't like maybe mm. someday you know, I, i'm not gonna say i've never jeep wave sometimes i feel like it it's yeah. happened it's rare right like if i see one i really like and i kind of respect them like man that's a sick looking jeep man what's up I'll do that. Yeah. Like it happens. Absolutely. And I, and, and cause I can, I can respect, you know, the time, effort, energy, money. Some cases, I don't really care if you built it yourself or not. Or you paid a shop. I don't care. Yeah. But I mean, every, every build takes something, right? If that's what you talked about fast and furious, somebody put in the wrench time, mm-hmm. somebody put in the wrench time. I always wanted to build a vehicle and call and call it wrench time with kind of that throwback to that fear, that fast and furious you know, the Dom cool. says, you know, <laughs> somebody put in the wrench time, even if it's you just throwing mm-hmm. money at it. You know, I don't really care about the built versus bought or bought. Not that I don't really give a crap. Um, somebody's building it. Even if it's you paying somebody to do it, 
or you've bought the parts and you're doing it yourself. Somebody paid you to make the money, even if it's, you know, you're a doctor and you want to be, somebody's putting in the wrench time and somebody's paying the bill. So I, I don't really care. But if I see it and I like it and it looks good, and it looks good to me, I may wave at it. But um, I'm not going to be held to some standard of waving at everything. And again, I don't stop that at Jeep, Jeep people. I don't, I don't, I own a Harley Davidson. I've owned four Harley Davidsons. I did it for like the I've, first six months I've, I had I've my had first one. one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've not done it since. Like every once in a while, again, same thing with the Jeep. Somebody, you know, because in Harley, in Jeep, it's the throw the two fingers up thing with the wave. Mm-hmm. In Harley, it's you throw it down. Yep. Um, it, it goes down side. by your left leg. And mm-hmm. it's it's almost like you're throwing something off your bike. But you just kind of take yeah. the fingers and you kind of put it down. And that's the, that's the Harley wave. I just got yeah. really tired of like, because then Indian came back and like, is it a Harley? Is it a Honda Valkyrie? Is it a Har-? like, and you just don't even know what you're waving at. Because, you know, again, I need to focus, especially riding a bike. I need to focus on the road yeah. ahead of me focus just as there's for safety. I'm against it. Yeah. Um, but again, if I find myself in a situation, I'm low speed, I'm through town. I got a minute to look. Maybe I'm at a, maybe I'm at a stoplight. I see a nice, I see a nice yeah. Harley and I'm on a mine. L- a little I head nod and a, and a I wave see a nice Jeep and I'm in mine. Way. You might get a wave, yeah, but I'm absolutely. certainly not going to be held to some standard of having to do it. You know, Doug, you know who I'm not going to wave to though? Uh, Broncos now. <laughs> People with 100 freaking ducks in their dash. Let's get right into that part. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Woo. So ducks. let's talk about the duck thing. I think that's why everyone's here. It's probably what I'm going to title this video when I edit <laughs> ducks it. Ducks and crap. Oh, the duck thing, man. First of all, since I, when? I, why do I see stock Jeeps with like, like you just said, why do I see completely like looks like it came off the da- like off the dealer floor last week? Mm-hmm. St- Stock Jeeps with like 100 da- ducks on the dash. And the next yeah. question is, how do you keep them up there, people? The 3M tape? I don't I don't know. But here's I legit the, don't know. Here's my thing, though. So in, I do understand why the duck thing started. I understand the woman that started it. It started off as a really wholesome, like, it, it was nice. In a, in a time of COVID when, when we thought shit was hitting the fan and the world was ending and everyone hated everyone and there was, you know, freaking social distancing and everything didn't even want to see your own family members. This woman started something that brought a little bit of happiness to, to other people and it just spread like wildfire. And so I get that aspect of it. I really do. I no hate there. What I'm I am going to criticize on it. is circling back to the need for validation and the me too thing. And like everyone wants to be seen and recognized. And I feel like part of the reason why the duck thing is taken off is for that is because if you have a duck, you felt seen, you feel like someone saw your Jeep and appreciated what you did, whether that's stock or built or whatever. However, like it, it looks ridiculous to have a hundred ducks in your dash. It's unsafe. Like, I don't know. Let me hear your thoughts. <laughs> I um, down this too far. I don't get it. I mean, the Canadians gave us hockey mm-hmm. and for that, I appreciate them. Yeah. I don't know what else they really gave us. Uh, including this, that is that great. I don't know where the connection in your head is. Like, I'm going to grab some rubber ducks that had never been used in that way before. And in this woman's head, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Um, I don't understand the connection between a duck and telling somebody you like them. I get that it's become a symbol. So mm-hmm. I get that. Um, and I get that people have decided, you know, I, I think a lot of it came from people figuring out how to monetize it, which mm-hmm. they have. You, you go to Jeep shows and it's Pete, there's entire booths set up to sell buckets of ducks. Yeah. Um, and they've been custom ducks. You can see the funny that my joke on the duck is right back here. It's got a little outlaw off-road logo on it. You know, that's my little joke on the duck. You know, Candace and Nashville had some of those made. And she called me before she had a mate. She's like, are you going to get mad if I do this? <laughs> I'm like, first of all, thank you for the respect to actually call me first and be like, yo, are you going to get mad? And also, thank you for knowing me well enough to know that I'm probably not going to like that too much. But um, I, I guess from one side of it, I guess I understand it. It's what you just said. It's the I feel seen in, in, in this in this age that we live in that people need. It seems like people need constant outside validation. That that is what it that is what it seems like to me. So I think you're right. There is why it kind of took off because it happened at the same time of, 
you know, Amazon happening and I'm buying all of this stuff, but now I can get some sort of recognition for it. And people are going to tell me how great my Jeep is. Um, because on the, I understand side of that equation, you never know what people are going through, right? You don't know if somebody's had a really bad day. They just found out their husband cheated on them. They just found out their wife's, you know, going to have the mailman's baby. Like they've got, <laughs> you know, addiction issues. Like you don't know. Okay. Yeah. And I get that part people of face it problems every day that totally understand that people yeah. have problems we all do we all get it um and some people find some relief from that in somebody validated me somebody liked me enough or liked my vehicle and it made me feel good and that's their little piece of the day that they had good so i'll give you that from that standpoint but again it's like the jeep wave all things in moderation if if you want to give somebody a token and say hey i really like your jeep I, I don't understand the relation of the duck thing, but I get the sentiment of saying I want somebody to have a token that I like their Jeep or I think their Jeep is cool or whatever. What I don't get is when we go overboard with it, which is the problem. Right. That is the problem. Again, all things in moderation. I right. think, every, I, I don't I think that. every single trend that we have talked about can be diluted down to all things in moderation. Mm -hmm. Colors are not bad in moderation lights are not bad in, in moderation. moderation uh the wave the jeep like the ducks the wave, all of that in stuff. moderation it's all no, it's, it's all no okay. different with the ducks and where i absolutely want to draw the line and this is something that i saw firsthand at pigeon forge this past year um for jeep invasion people were literally stopping traffic on a to throw ducks three and people. four lane per sign mm -hmm. highway to stop and give ducks or go pick up ducks. There were children running in the road to grab ducks. Like this is unsafe. Let's draw the line somewhere, please. I will uh, tell you if, what pissed me know, off more pick than Pick out three or four that of your favorite and stick them on your dash. Look, Don't put all freaking 100. The, the thing of, I, I have a couple problems with people putting out ducks. Number one, and I get, this is the other side of it. I get the thing of, this is my private property. Don't touch my stuff. I get that. I, I told people that don't like 100% against them. I understand that. I understand both sides. Took the race car to Jeep Invasion last year. We put the Jeep, we put the race car out and I was around it most of the time. But every day, every night of being out there under the bridge, I would come back to countless ducks. The Jeep, the, the race car is open. It doesn't really have a real roof. It doesn't have full doors. It doesn't have windows. It doesn't have anything like that. So there's really nothing I can do to stop that from happening aside from just never go anywhere. And obviously I'm not going to do that. So I understand that I'm going to open myself up to some of that stuff. I understand that I'm going to have to go and clean ducks off the hood and throw them away. Like I get that I'm going to do that. Maybe give them to some kid who wants them, whatever. I found a mini duck in my air hose from my helmet pump. Found that at Hammers. Um, somebody had shoved a duck up the air vent, a little mini duck. Um. Now, I get that that is not the general jeeping community that would do something like that, but I would absolutely throat punch that person. Don't care if I went to jail and had to make bail um, because I found it because I thought we had a problem with the helmet pumper. And when I went to go look at the pump, I found this idiot had stuffed the freaking duck in my helmet. Like I'm, This is a legit race car. Like I have to have that air. Or bad things can happen, yeah. like especially in a long race like Hammers, right. like uh, Arizona. I need, I need to keep dust out of there. Mm. I need to keep when my visor from falling up. Exactly I need ideal. to keep myself from mm -hmm. you know overheating and dying. Like this is a serious thing. So, like anything, when it comes to being unsafe, you're you're gonna lose me 100 percent of the time. So I think it is like that. It is it has gotten to the point where people have disregarded decency. People have disregarded personal just generally accepted of of society boundaries with the throwing ducks at me when i'm driving down the road i think if you guys want to put a duck on somebody's vehicle and you do that again like you said in moderation go for it i don't i don't care i've never taken somebody's duck and then just thrown it back at them have i kept every duck no absolutely not once you give me the duck it's mine to do with what i want if i want to throw it away i'm gonna throw it away i'm gonna give it to a kid i'm gonna give it to a kid you can't tell me what to do with the duck so i get to do with that duck whatever i want but when you start violating safety, my safety, when you start throwing things at me, when you start potentially causing damage because you're shoving, when you're shoving a duck in my door handle, you could you could you could damage my door handle, you could damage my paint, you could do all that. You want to set it up somewhere. I can't stop. Okay, fine, whatever. 
but then it's on me to do with whatever I want with the duck. I don't like the idea. I, I don't, I still don't understand how they're, I'm still not hundred percent sure how they're keeping the ducks up there on the dash. I think that's weird. They've got to be using super something. glue or three M tape. I, or something. I, don't, I don't know. Something. Somebody who's got um, somebody who's watching this, who has like, and I don't care about one or two. I want to know somebody who's got like 30 or 40 of these things across your dash. How are you securing them to your dash? That's I, I just want to know that. Cause I honestly, I don't know. I yeah. genuinely don't know. <laughs> and I am curious. Yeah. I've wondered that. I never asked anybody. I guess I probably should have. I've never, never really thought to do that. I'm obviously not going to do it. So, I mean, I guess I'm in anti-duck camp, but I'm not so far in anti-duck camp that I'm like, it shouldn't be done. Um, right. Again, like you said, and and be considerate of other people's property. Like, Correct. don't sub Absolutely. one in my fresh air vent. Don't put one inside of some. I do draw, even if the windows are down, I draw the line. Do not cross the plane into somebody's vehicle. Don't. You know, I had right. this happen on Reaper at, at uh, what was it, Myrtle Beach a couple years ago. I parked it outside for the night when they asked us to park it outside at the Hard Rock. And I came out and I had the windows down, but the doors were closed. They were full doors. They were closed. The front windows were down so that people could see some of the stuff that we had done to the interior. And I had the back ones done because there was nothing done to the back. There was no reason to look at the back. There was, I, I kid you not, I still know the count to this day. 31 ducks inside the Jeep. That's not outside. Zero ducks when I went into the Hard Rock. I went in. We I was probably in there for two to two and a half hours between going in. They they we had a thing for dinner. We had a thing after, and I came back out about two and a half hours later to check on the jeep, and then we had to go somewhere else. We had to go to another. I think we had to go down to another party or something. Um, thirty one ducks, thirty one ducks on the inside of the jeep. They had put them on that little handbar. They had put them in the seat. They had put them on the dashboard. Like that's where I'm going to draw the line. I draw the line at safety. I draw the line at invading actual space of my property. Right. Well, I mean, and who's to say that one of those ducks don't get wedged up underneath your brake pedal and now you don't have full brake. Right. Pedal. I, exactly. That's, um, and that's exactly what I'm saying. hundred percent. Or a duck gets, you know, caught on your foot and you're trying to kick it out from your gas pedal and gets lodged on the side of your gas pedal. And yeah. now your gas is jammed. There's, there's like, so many things here. that, that can happen yeah. there that people don't think mm-hmm. about. And they, they stop thinking at it's a cute thing. And they just don't consider anything past that. So, again, what if a bunch get lodged under the e-brake and I'm trying to drift <laughs> and I'm trying to release the handbrake to get out of the drift. But now I can't. So I have to just keep drifting like that would look bad on camera. I kid. <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> the brake pedal thing is, is a real yeah. thing. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of ways. And I get the duck people out there are going to we're pissing people off on both sides. The non-duck people are like, you should be against ducks. You said you're against. Them. I don't like ducks. I'm not going to do yeah, it. Personally. I'm not 100 percent anti-duck. But I am against it when it interferes with safety mm-hmm. and, and people's personal property rights. Absolutely. Like I am against that. Right. Um, not against the community I'm aspect. Not, but I'm not yeah, for it. I'm, I'm on the same page. Definitely the safety Just aspect. Just like the Jeep but, wave. Like I'm not against if somebody wants to wave right. at me, but don't get mad at me when I don't wave back. Right. Like that should that's for you, not for me. Right. You Jeep waving is not for me. You don't know me. Tell yourself whatever you want. You're not doing that for me. You're doing it for yourself. Um the Jeep duck thing. I guess the argument could be made you're doing it for somebody else. I think that was the original intent of it. But I think now people are just doing it to kind of fit in to an extent. And again, with everything, there's obviously some people out there who I think are still doing it with the original intent of, hey, I just want to recognize your cool vehicle that I like. Um, But if that's really what it is, then why are we limiting it to Jeeps? Why aren't you paying on somebody's cool Mustang or their cool Lamborghini? Why does it have to be? How did the duck and the Jeep thing get together? Because now they're doing... Uh, is it, is it the rubber cow for Moo Moo Subaru that I've seen? And then there's the, the rubber horse or Bronco for the Bronco thing now. So like now it's moving on. I mean, the Moo Moo Subaru was clever. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was, I kind of <laughs> laughed a little bit and chuckled when I saw that. Yeah. Um, but then I saw something this morning on a Facebook post where it said that it was a, it was a Bronco group. And they said, I got, I got, I got Jeep ducked. And they showed a picture of it. It was clearly a, a Jeep duck because it had a little card on it. Some of these people put cards on them of you've been ducked by whatever Jeep club. And he's like, should I be, should I be, should I take it as a compliment or should I be offended? And like some people in there were kind of joking around, but there was like legit people in there in this Facebook post that were seriously like, I can't believe they would do that. Like, oh, damn Jeep people. And I'm like, calm down, calm down, like, like that's, calm down, like just calm down. On the same aspect, you can take it too far on the let's duck everything and throw ducks in people's vehicles side of things. Duck all the things. You can absolutely take it too far on the, 
hating on duck people thing too. I mean, and it's it's polarizing. I get it. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this episode. It is very polarizing. But it's fun to hate on duck people. I mean, it, it is, and, I, yeah. and I've and I've fallen. I've done that too. But I think this with the ducks, with the Jeep wave, with the color, it's everything. I am not a hundred percent for a hundred percent against any of the trends that you have brought up, or or the one or right. two that I brought up. I'm not a thousand percent against having show and shines at Jeep shows. Mm-hmm. There's a place for that. Mm-hmm. I, I can get it. I get people that want to get recognized for best off-road build or best lighting setup or, you know, cleanest build. I, I get that. Yeah. I, I'm not a fan of the whole, we give, we have 20 vehicles at the show and shine and we have 21 categories. So everyone gets a participation trophy. Right. I, I don't like that. I don't like some of that stuff. I think it's gone a little overboard, but I think if you can do that again in moderation, it seems to be, I don't think that was our intention to have that as a theme today, but it kind of came out. If you do it in a way that's, you know, kind of middle of the road, you know, I, I think it can be good. I'm not a thousand percent against anything that you've talked about. I'm also not absolutely solidly in the for it camp on any of the trends Correct. that you've done. I think they have their place. I think they have a level that they can be done at. And I think the problem comes on both sides. Ducks, for example, the over duckers and then the absolute no ducks anywhere duck haters. Mm-hmm. Like I don't I don't side with either one of those groups. Right. Same thing on the Jeep wave. Same thing on the show and shine. Same thing on all of the trends, on the colors, on the lighting. I, I think there's a place for some everywhere. Um, but I think we just got to stay away. And and you could do that in almost all things in your life. Yeah, almost I mean, everything that, in your life. This is going to turn you talk about, oh, I want to lose a few pounds. <laughs> I want to lose 10 pounds. Okay, that's great. You want to lose yeah. 10 pounds. Don't starve yourself. But there's also no reason to go 1,000% caveman diet. <laughs> And 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 that's your new religion. Like right. I'm gonna follow CrossFit like it's the Bible, <laughs> or I'm just gonna starve myself like I'm a contestant on Survivor. Like yeah, it's all in okay, moderation. There's a way to Everything do that. In life like is moderation. You know, there's a way to do that. Maybe hit the gym a little bit. Maybe start eating a little healthier. Like do it, do it in moderation, right? Like that's everything. It is. Um, so it it's not just is. Jeep ducks and everything like that. I think that maybe that's the lesson of. Maybe that's yeah. the only thing. Yeah, maybe maybe, that, just maybe needs, we can convince people of that. Yeah, maybe humanity just needs a little maybe. more moderation in general. For sure. <laughs> yeah, you just you just. All said right, a Doug. Lot. Let's start. We're gonna start another. <laughs> we're gonna start another podcast. <laughs> we are. Let's stop this one. We're done. We're done with this one. We're done with this one. Oh. oh um, all right, and it was a long one, and I get that. Yeah. Thank you all for kind of sticking around and sticking with us. I'm sure the comments are gonna get hit on this one. Um, don't don't hate the don't hate the messenger. Right. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. I think that was from a 90s movie. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, yeah, don't hate the player. Hate the game. We, we always appreciate all of you, whether you agree with us or not. We always appreciate everybody stopping by and either watching us, listening to us, you know, wherever they find us, you know, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, all those places. We, we appreciate all you guys. Again, watchers or or listeners. We want we want more of you. We want more of you. Um, so please, again, yes, thank you. But also please remember to uh, like, share subscribe comment you know get involved um we do look we do read we do pull ideas 100 we do from the comments from the questions um i i have i pulled a question i don't know if i sent it to you or not yet i pulled a question uh, a long question about gearing from another youtube video from a youtube video that we did that's an outlaw offer video that somebody kind of gave a little dissertation i was like oh that's it i'm actually going to go on that video later today and tell him that we're going to answer his question on a mailbag. So we absolutely do look, we absolutely do check for that. So we thank you guys for doing that. Thank everybody for doing that. Um, Again, just remember like comment, share, subscribe, comment it up, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, That is how we will leave it for today. Remember, just like I just said, we do have our mailbag episodes and or our special episodes that drop every Friday alongside of our main episodes here on dirt to dust that do drop every Wednesday. Um, So don't forget that again, if you subscribe, you don't have to worry about it subscribe wherever you find your podcast you don't yep. have to worry about listening to me in the schedule so um get on that appreciate you guys being here caleb thanks again that's where of we're going to leave it until next time here on dirt to dust we'll see you on the next episode ducks out oh jeez. you've been listening to the dirt to dust presented by outlaw off-road the premier off-road centers for jeeps trucks and suvs Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, 
To see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.